Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the trapezius muscle. Let's get started. The trapezius is a complex shaped muscle on our neck, shoulders, and back. The trapezius originates along a ridge on the base of our skull, down a ligament in the back of the neck, and along the spiny processes of the 12 thoracic vertebra. It inserts along the inner edge of the spine of the scapula, around the acromion process, and a little on the inside of the clavicle. The trapezius can be seen from the front and makes up the profile of our upper shoulder section. Depending on the development of the physique, they can be very thick, which will make the silhouette of the neck feel short, or they can be thin, which will make the silhouette of the neck feel long. On the back, the trapezius has a very complex shape. You can see it overall as a diamond or kite shape that goes from the back of the neck to the shoulders and to the bottom of the lower back. If you bend the lines of the diamond to conform to the muscle, it becomes a star shape. There is also a diamond shaped section of tendon over the back of the neck right at the seventh cervical vertebra. Because this thin tendon is on top of the seventh cervical vertebra, it allows it to be a more pronounced bony landmark. As the trapezius goes around the scapula, it covers the upper corner with a wedge of tendon. However, this is very thin, and from the surface, mostly disappears. So the trapezius appears to crawl around the edge of the scapula, which helps us identify the landmarks. The trapezius anchors to the spine and inserts into the scapula. Because of its complex shape, it has multiple functions. If the upper section contracts, it will pull the scapula up. This movement is how we would shrug our shoulders. If the inner section contracts, it will pull the scapula in or down depending on which parts of the muscle striations activate. Now let's find the trapezius from the surface. The trapezius is pretty easy to find on the surface since it creates part of the profile of the body. Starting at the base of the skull, we can go down the back of the neck and across the upper shoulder area to the flat spot of the acromion process. This shadow across shows the upper part of the trapezius sitting on top of the spine of the scapula, and then the shadow down shows it moving around the inner border of the scapula. Before it reaches the bottom of the scapula, it angles off and moves towards the spine. Then it moves up the spine with a diamond-shaped notch over the seventh cervical vertebra. Because the trapezius crawls over the top and inside of the scapula, it allows us to find it pretty accurately from the surface. We need to make note of something here. If we envision a rib cage under the surface, the trapezius should insert at the bottom of the thoracic vertebra. The trapezius is thicker towards the top and connects with a thinner tendon, making it look like it ends higher than its actual insertion point. Also notice that this side of the trapezius is shorter than this side where the scapula has moved out, stretching the trapezius with it. The trapezius can look slightly different depending on the way it develops. We can trace this model's trapezius like the last but notice it curves over the scapula here. This section sometimes overlaps the scapula as the small portion of trapezius tendon connects back to the upper edge. The trapezius can become very pronounced when it is developed, making the edges of it more clearly defined. And we can see the latissimus coming out from underneath the bottom section of trapezius here. Remember all of these points when drawing the trapezius. Analyze the anatomy on the surface of your reference and draw from observation and memory to help you learn. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.